of all patients in the first study that we now are in the terrorism. Can you explain what is mild HPA? It's basically it's the same disease as PKU. It's a deficiency in the same molecule in the body. We have decided, basically, that these patients do not require treatment, basically because we have to balance the good side of and the bad side of treatment to the good and bad of the disease. And it's decided that these patients are better off without treatment. Yes, and do you have enough data to make these decisions? I don't think so. I come from a country that I come from Spain in the southern countries in Italy and Spain we have a very large amount of these kind of patients and um, there's not enough data and there's not enough um, we even in the medical uh, community we have not made our own mind either in some countries they treat with higher levels in some countries they treat with lower levels Why? Because there's not enough data. A lot of the data we have is extrapolated from studies done in actual PKU patients with higher levels. What it is clear, and it is getting clearer as time goes by and more studies come out, is that um, if the normal physiological fee levels are much lower, probably it's better to have patients with lower levels. So it's better to treat patients or start treating patients with lower levels. What is that cutoff level? That's not decided up to now. Okay, so how can we solve this practical problem of having not enough data? Doing studies. The problem is since it's patients that uh, have very mild symptoms as they have any, it's very, very hard to actually get results from these patients because you're trying to detect very, very mild differences. So it's it's hard. It is, it's hard investigation to detect these very, very mild changes. They are there in the studies that we do have. As I say, they're not that many. Um, it is it is shown that mild PKU, well, mild hyperfe, mild PKU, whatever you want to call it, patients do have uh, symptoms. They have a no normal neurological development, but they have mild symptoms, not as severe as actual PKU patients, but they're not completely normal. And of course, uh, these patients, if there are those changes, they might, they certainly require follow-up. They certainly require follow-up. And then it has to be decided whether treatment for these very mild symptoms is worth it or not. Okay, well, let's go back to the patient himself or herself. If you were my doctor and uh, my child had an untreated level, had untreated levels between 360 and 600, uh, what would you recommend to me? Well, not all patients are the same. Not all mild hyperfe patients are the same either. And as I say, I have a many, many mild hyperfee patients. And what I see is that fee levels fluctuate. They fluctuate just the same as they do in normal PKU patients. You have some patients that have very stable levels and some patients that do not. Of course, if the levels are going up and down, they might be on a safe range most of the time, but they have peaks. If those peaks are very frequent, they can mean that that patient is at a higher risk of having problems. So those patients I do treat. Actually in Spain we treat all patients that have levels above 360 micromoles per liter, but I even treat some patients that have many levels under 360 but have a lot of peaks. And I think that if there's a risk and if there's a treatment that is not very, um, doesn't have many side effects for the patient, well, then it's worth it. I'm not going to risk the brain of a child if I have something that does not have many side effects and I can use. And that's what I'm actually doing at the moment. <laughs>